So the call to arms system is one that was introduced by Blizzard to give rewards to people who were performing a certain role in PvE content in WoW. And because the intent of this system was to reduce queue times for people by incentivizing playing a role that is less popular, so usually tank or healer, it would mean that more people would be willing to do so and they would be able to get more groups completed rather than having thousands of DPS waiting to get in and no tanks and healers to go with them. Unfortunately, this system was a little bit flawed when it was first released and the fact that it gave exceptional rewards meant that we had an awful lot of people that were queuing for a specific role while not being able to perform it. So you would get a great many people who would be queuing up as, let's say, tank and then trying to do the whole thing as ret. Now, of course, Blizzard has the means now that if you were to queue for a specific role, it can force you into the spec for that role. And that does, of course, mean that we could potentially one day, hopefully, see the return of the exceptional rewards in the forms of the mounts and pets that were very rare to get that you used to be able to find on rare occasions in the Call to Arms satchel. But as it stands, these Call to Arms satchels are a little bit underwhelming, but one thing that does remain is the raw gold now these satchels give roughly a thousand gold here and there when you open them as well as some battle scarred augment runes now this is a relatively small reward and one that at first glance would make you think eh, what's really the point but i was curious as to just how easily you can actually attain these satchels nowadays so so these satchels are of course giving raw gold and recently raw gold fans have become increasingly more popular so I decided to hop onto a character and get myself a satchel or two and test what I got in as well as the gold, how many augment runes I got, how much gold I got and what else I picked up along the way and also how long it took me to do this to see if it was a viable method of making gold. And that's what this video is about today. I'm going to share with you the results and let you decide for yourselves if you think this is feasible for you to do as a gold making strategy. Now, in this video, I will be reviewing the capacity of getting these satchels from heroic dungeons when the call to arms is on, not from look for raid. Now, this is simply because look for raid in terms of the time used, I felt was just going to be too high. There are potentially the option at times where Look for Raid will have one boss encounters, which you could potentially do quite quickly if the Call to Arms was on. But it is obviously more prone to wipes if people don't do mechanics properly and also just being longer fights. I personally don't think that it is going to be viable to farm Call to Arms for Look for Raid. But if it is something that people are interested in, I will look into it for you. So let me know down in the comments below. Back to today's video. So we were using a Demon Hunter who we were actually queuing as a tank for the Call to Arms for Tanks. And we were at an item level of about 413 for each of these runs. We were also doing this in patch 8.2. And we were using the Visions of Perfection Essence because that was the best I had at the time of recording. Now, as you can see, I did queue up as tank and then did proceed to do the dungeon as Havoc. Now, this is because of the item level disparity between what was intended for these dungeons and where I stand. I didn't have any problem taking the hits or keeping aggro with this DPS spec because of the massive amounts of self-sustain has and that is something that you would have to consider in the viability of doing this as a farm for yourself. Now admittedly I haven't done a lot of actual gameplay on WoW side of gold making in quite a while so the standard I was playing to was pretty poor in my opinion and that is also a factor as well if you are an extremely skilled player you could potentially make extra gold by being more efficient in your dungeon runs but I feel that this is going to be less viable because of the difficulty generally being lower for heroics now, comparative to gear level and class, so do bear that in mind. Now unfortunately I can't really see a way that you're going to be able to make gold farming the call to arms for healer, unfortunately. You are going to have to wait for when it is tank or if you are incredibly fortunate as a DPS, simply because to make this a viable gold making method you will have to be very fast in your dungeon runs. As of course, it is going to be one satchel per completion and not in terms of the amount of time you spend 
the quicker you run the dungeons the more gold you will make and as a healer you're just not going to impact the completion time of the dungeon all that much healers are more there to impact the actual success of the dungeon as opposed to how quickly you are successful now you do see me running as a dps for these tests as a even though i have queued in a tank role and that is because i can perform the role of tank efficiently in a dps spec if you are playing a character that can't you can't hold aggro or you can't self-sustain the same i would recommend that you stick to the tank role that you queued at and just consider that a factor in the speed of the dungeon how you're going to be able to do it of course if you were to do it as a tank role your survivability is going to be considerably higher in most cases which does mean you can pull more mobs and you could potentially still get the same kind of times as i did here i just elected to do it this way for all the tests now when it comes to my tests i of course had to run random heroic dungeons which meant i was going to be placed with four random people of whatever gear level and skill proficiency that they may well have had and also a random dungeon on each occasion and of course for this there are certainly better dungeons to get than others you want nice quick efficient dungeons as opposed to long ones with lots of rp and things like that so while i didn't get it i imagine freehold would be a fantastic one to get providing that people are willing to skip the majority of the dungeon just go to the last boss and kill it you could probably get very short runs indeed and by comparison any of the longer dungeons are going to be considerably worse i did actually have the slowest run that i had was told gore which is normally a relatively quick dungeon but of course if you lack a rug or something to open the doors it's very easily going to get out of hand and if people don't know how to utilize the cannons correctly then this of course can slow you down greatly also i expected these factors to have quite a large influence on the outcome during my testing but in all honesty it wasn't as drastic as it may well have been i did find myself having quite a variety in terms of the skill level of the players that i was with and the dungeon combinations but the quickest run i had was about 10 minutes and the longest was about 15 and as a result i while it is a 50 percent increase it's not all that drastic comparative to what i imagined i honestly thought that a fast run might well have been a bit quicker than 10 minutes and i could definitely foresee a slow run being quite a lot longer than the 15 but in testing it didn't out come out that way so i will be considering the average completion time to be 12 and a half minutes as that is actually what it came to i had one at about 12 and a half one at 15 and one at 10. now for the juicy bit the rewards what did we come away with now i am not counting cloth that i picked up nor am i counting greens as these have varying value to different people and are very much inconsistent as well as the fact that i am a tailor which does increase the amount of cloth that i got from looting the mobs if you're wanting to do this incredibly efficiently just for the sake of the satchel you may not even want to loot the mobs so these are not things that i'm going to consider in the calculations just the end rewards that i got from bosses and the satchel so as a result this meant that i came away with almost exactly 930 gold from the satchel each time it varied a couple of gold here and there but 930 is what you are going to get give or take 10 gold for the completion of the dungeon and the opening of your satchel now the other item that you are going to acquire from your satchels as i alluded to earlier is the battle scarred augment runes now on average at the time of recording these are selling for 186 gold on average across eu realms but you do not get one you generally get three or at least in my experience that is what i came away with i'm given to understand that the satchel can drop anywhere from one to five so again getting three is not a particularly big surprise as of course that is right bang in the middle i did get a two a three and a four on my runs which of course averages out to three per run and that would mean that you are getting roughly 550 gold per run in augment runes now for those of you who are doing your napkin maths as we go along with the video that does come to a rough average of one and a half thousand gold per satchel that we are opening 930 give or take 10 gold for the actual raw gold itself 
and three augment runes, which when you factor in the server differentials and things, I'm going to come to the conclusion that it is going to be around 1,500 gold per run in satchel value. Now, if you are doing this in 12 and a half minutes for your runs, which is the average that it took me, you are going to get four runs in in an hour and then the better part of a fifth. But since we're talking complete runs, you're going to be able to complete fully four runs. That would give a total value of my testing of about 6,000 raw gold per hour. Now, make of that what you will. If you think that that is a good return, then by all means consider farming Call to Arms. Do bear in mind all the things we've discussed so far in terms of the viability of being able to complete this farm. And also do bear in mind that there is server variance when it comes to Battle Scout Augment Runes, as well as variance on the day of the week and the time of the day. If you're going to squeeze out that bit extra in the value of your Augment Runes, then of course you can do so and that will increase the value of doing this farm. The final thing that I wanted to mention is of course the fact that you can have professions on your characters and many of these professions will gather materials while running these dungeons and that is something that you may want to consider as well. I, for the sake of these calculations I assumed no professions due to the fact that it is too variable to consider them all. For example I am well set up for making extra gold on this character that I ran it on in the fact that I am an enchanter and a tailor so I got considerable cloth drops more than what you would normally get as well as the ability to disenchant any of the items that I got from the bosses. If anyone is curious on all three runs I came away with just one blue item so of course that would generally speaking be one shard and some dust. But then of course you have to consider the tool of the trade as well if you do want to add that on to the value that you are getting from performing this farm then please do so but for the sake of the points that I am making I am not going to be including it in my one and a half thousand gold total. Personally I think six thousand gold an hour for a raw gold farm is pretty excellent. It's obviously not going to compete with farms where you are not acquiring raw gold and they are generally a better use of your time but if you are someone who is really big on raw gold or you have a need for it particularly over getting items to sell on the auction house then this is definitely a viable method to consider providing you have the character to do so. But that's going to about wrap it up for me guys. I do hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do consider liking. And if you do want to be kept up to date with any future videos that I brought out, please do consider subscribing to the channel. But for now, guys, that's going to about do it for me, and I hope to see you in the next one. Later.